Hello everyone and welcome to Approaches Lesson 4 where we are going to be looking at the Cognitive Approach. Now just a quick heads up, this is the first time that I have recorded and uploaded the Outline and Evaluate elements separately. My thinking is that shorter videos should make it easier to take in and keep all of the information. So any feedback on whether or not you think this works better for you would be great. Um, so. On that note, this video is only going to cover the outline elements of the cognitive approach. If you are more interested in the evaluation or you already know the outline, then the link to part two should be on your screen now. So the cognitive approach was developed in the 1950s as a response to the failure of the behaviorist approach to acknowledge mental processes. The cognitive approach is therefore in direct contrast to the behaviorist approach. It argues that internal mental processes can and should be studied scientifically. And as a result of that, the cognitive approach investigates those areas of human behavior that had previously been neglected by the behaviorist approach. Things like attention, perception, memory, language, thinking, that kind of stuff. Obviously, these processes occur in the mind and are therefore private processes. Therefore, these processes are studied indirectly via inferences. And inferences refers to the process of drawing conclusions about what is going on inside someone's mind based on observed behavior. Now, in order to help cognitive psychologists understand internal processes, they use theoretical and computer models. Theoretical models are abstract and generally consist of diagrams depicting the flow of information or the flow of cognitive processing. Whereas computer models, on the other hand, consist of computer simulations that are generally created with the help of programmers or program developers. Both theoretical and computer models assist with research that's being conducted because they allow the researchers to test their hypotheses and then the models get changed depending on what they find. One important theoretical model is the information processing approach which suggests that information flows through a sequence of cognitive systems which include input, storage and retrieval and an example of that would be the multi-store model or the working memory model which you learn about in the memory topic. Now, cognitive processing can often be affected by a person's belief or expectation. And these beliefs and expectations are referred to as schema, that act as cognitive frameworks to help us organize and interpret information that's coming in from the environment. They develop with age, and we generally start with very simple innate motor schema, like grabbing or wiggling our toes or sucking things like you often see babies do, and then they are developed through experience with our environment and help us to respond to situations appropriately. So for example, everyone has a schema, let's say, of a chair. If you walk into a room and there's a chair in the middle of the room, then chances are your schema are going to tell you what to do. They are going to tell you to sit on that chair because that's what the chair is for. Equally, a wedding. Even people who have never been to a wedding generally have a schema of what a wedding is. That's because through interaction with media or through uh, hearing about a wedding that somebody's been to, we generally are able to make a picture of what a wedding is in our minds. You might not know everything, but you have a general idea. Now, our schema process and catalog information really, really quickly via cognitive shortcuts like assumptions and stereotypes. And that's great. Given the amount of information that we're actually confronted with on a daily basis, we'd otherwise be overwhelmed with how much is actually coming in. However, the downside of that is that it can lead to interpretations being distorted. For example, in eyewitness testimony, schemata can lead to witnesses reporting their expectations of an event due to their schema of that event filling in the blanks rather than reporting what actually happened. Okay, so that is the downside of schema that they fill in the blanks and actually distort what we remember just so that we aren't left with a blank memory. So one final element of the approach that you need to know about is the emergence of cognitive neuroscience. Cognitive neuroscience is the scientific study of the influence of brain structures on mental processes. 
So, for example, cognitive neuroscience can tell us about how certain neurotransmitters impact our behavior, like the effect of serotonin on depression or on OCD, or the effect of dopamine on schizophrenia. But it's also about how structures of the brain, like the amygdala, are related to emotion, or where in the brain memory is located, that kind of thing. The very beginning of cognitive neuroscience can be traced back to around the mid-19th century, where Paul Broca identified damage to an area of the frontal lobe could actually impair speech production. And that area is now called Broca's area, and it's in the left frontal lobe. Over the last 20 years, cognitive neuroscience has advanced massively due to the advances in brain imaging techniques such as fMRIs and PET scans, which have allowed scientists to systematically observe and describe the neurological basis of mental processes. For example, research by Tolving has found that episodic and semantic memory are located on opposite sides of the prefrontal cortex, and research by Braver has found that the central executive is potentially also located in a very similar area. Cognitive neuroscience has also played a massive role in understanding psychiatric disorders. So, for example, it has shown us the link between the parahippocampal gyrus, which is involved in processing unpleasant emotions, and the development of OCD. In more recent years, cognitive neuroscience has expanded to include the use of computational models, which has led to the development of mind mapping techniques known as brain fingerprinting, which in the future could be used in a variety of different ways, for example, to measure the brain waves of eyewitnesses in court to determine whether or not they're lying. Okay, so the development of cognitive neuroscience is named on the spec, and you could get asked about it. So make sure that you can just document a little bit how cognitive neuroscience actually emerged over the years. So just before we finish off then, I have for you a six mark model answer on outline the cognitive approach. As with a lot of topics in psychology, it's going to be crucial that you are able to condense a lot of information down to the crucial details. So this is how I would do it if I were you. I would start off with a general introduction to the cognitive approach, the basic assumptions and what it suggests. I would then move on to talk about theoretical and computer models, why they're important, what they are, what the difference between the two is, and so on, maybe with a little bit of an example like the multi-store model. Then as a final paragraph, I would talk about schema. Now, this final paragraph is probably going to be the one that is the most difficult to write, simply because there is so much to say about schema, actually condensing it down into a small paragraph is fairly tricky. So, what you've got on the screen in front of you there is how I would do it. It gives the bare essentials of what schema are, how they work, why they're important, and also what role they play in the cognitive approach. Okay, so have a little look at that and just take in the way that I've done it. Obviously, there are a lot of other ways that you can do it as well. This is just one, but that is what I would do. Okay? You don't have to talk about the emergence of cognitive neuroscience in an outline, um, because there's plenty of other stuff to talk about. Okay? So that is the end of part one and the end of the outline of the cognitive approach. The link to the evaluation video should be appearing on your screen right now, so you can go ahead and head over there and watch that one. So I hope it's all made sense and I hope it's been useful and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.